specifically means the place of cows, which is from our external vision at the present time situated in the Madhura district of Puchka Pradesh. This is specifically Nanda Shet Rajaha. This is Nanda Maharaj's cowherd in Brahma. He is a king. He is known as Nanda Maharaj. This is right there that he is known as the king because he is the leader of the Vaisya community. Vaisya is their business is Kirti, Gorasya, Banijam. Agriculture, cow protection, and trade. We have that word in modern Gujarati or Hindi, Banya. So that comes from the Sanskrit word Banijya. Banijya means trade. And Banya means market. So among the three occupations that we write there, go right there. Protection of the cows is considered most important because cow protection is central to Vedic culture. Any follower of Vedic culture must respect the cow. Now that helps them, even if they're Mayavadi, they all have a need. Mayavadi, at least in the traditional Sampradaya, they will respect cow. So that will help them because Krishna is from the cow. His name is Gopal, Govinda. Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha. Go Brahmana Hit Hitakari. He does good and he likes to see the cows. And Brahmana is a benefit. And in one part of the says that Krishna is known as Go Brahmana Hit. He likes to see the benefit of the cows and the Brahmana. So also see the cows in one We have here so many Kapila, you know, brown cows. So they're supposed to be the According to Shastra, they are the most auspicious cows. Dark brown color. So Nanda Maharaj is right there. This is Nanda Shri Raja. It is his Raja. Sometimes we hear of Vrindavan Ishwari or Raja Ishwari and so on. So that means either Radharani or Yashoda. He is also known as Raja Ishwari. He is known as Radhishwari because he is the wife of Nanda Maharaj, who is the ruler or overlord of Radhishwari, this place where the cows are protected. So all very nicely getting ready for the appearance of Krishna. Now that Radhishwari, that is eternally the residence of Krishna. Krishna has appeared in Vrindavan. But actually Krishna is always in Vrindavan. Vindavanam Sarit Sarja, the Asam Padanda. The Krishna never goes out of Vindavan even by one step. Yes, so. There's no question of Krishna not being in Vindavan, and there's no question of Vindavan not being full of Sarva Samridhi, Samridhi Ma. Ridhi means opulence. Samridhi means full exhibition of opulence. So Vrindavan here is described here as Sarva Samriddhi Mahat. So full ex- Sarva Samriddhi, giving full emphasis that all opulence is in full in all ways became present in Vrindavan. And Vrindavan is always fully opulent. But with Krishna's appearance there, then that opulence became manifested for everyone to see. Otherwise, Vrindavan is always the place of the goddess of fortune, Rama. Rama Akira, the place where Rama, the goddess of fortune, performs her pastime. That means the Hasra Tata, Sam Rama Sejana, this has always served with hundreds and thousands of Lakshmi, or goddesses of fortune, in the land of Raja. And truly not, when we say Rama, Lakshmi, she these are names for Lakshmi, who is Vaikuntana Patni, who is the wife of Vaikuntana Narayana. And actually, she can't enter into the pastimes of Krishna as the gopi in the same way as described in the Purana. And she wanted to. She wanted to join the Rasa Kura, Rasa Lila. But she couldn't do it. Despite the falling of service, because there is no way to enter the pastimes of 
to intimate past times with Krishna with the gopis, but the following austerity, that is not the method. You can perform austerities as much as you like, even if you are like this. But the process is to be gopi anagatya, to follow in the footsteps of you. Gopi, gopi anagatya vina aishvarya bhave, bhagya leha na pai, gopi bhave. So the essence is there, the Gopi Anagatya Vina is without following the footsteps of the Gopis, if one has Aishvarya Bha, the mood of thinking of Krishna in all endeavors, then even if you worship Krishna, you don't get the position of the Gopis. It's not possible, even for Lakshmi. So here said Rama Akriram, the place of passion for the goddess of fortune. So the purport, Prabhupada is given the purport that this Rama here indicates that the supreme goddess of fortune, Adi Lakshmi. When you say Adi Lakshmi, we usually think of the form of Lakshmi with Vishnu. But really the Adi Lakshmi is Radharani. So she is the source of all the Lakshmi forms. Just like from Krishna, all the Vishnu forms emanate. Krishna and Balaram, from Balaram come all the Jivas, that's one direction. And then from Vasudeva, Sankarsan, Adyamna Aniruddha, the third Sattva Vyuha, and Narayana, and then another Sattva Vyuha, and all this, all the incarnations, and all the incarnations, who appear in this material world, they appear through the agency of the Purush. That means the Purush Abhata, Karadakta Vishnu, Kavadakta Vishnu, Shiradakta Vishnu. So Krishna is the source of all the Abhatas and all the Jivas. Aham Sarvasya Prabhava, Matasta Ramdhavasya. Everything comes from Krishna, everyone comes from Krishna. The female principle who is non different from Krishna. Shakti Shaktanata Abheda. The Shakti means the female principle and the Shakti Mata, Shakti Ma, the male principle. They are non different because they are inseparable. The source of power and the power itself they are inseparable. There's no meaning to be a source of power if there's no power. And power cannot exist without a source. So in this way they are inseparable. Still they define as Shakti and Shakti Ma. So Shakti means the original Shakti or energetic expansion of Krishna is Radharani. And from her all the Lakshmi's expand, all the gopis expand, then the Varaka, Mahishi, they are all expansion of Radharani. So here Rama, the goddess of fortune. Rama, this name suggests enjoyment. Rananta Yogi no Nante Satsang Siddhartani is the Rama Sadhana. Param Rama Sadhana. The absolute truth is known as Rama. Because the yogis they take pleasure in thinking of Rama, considering Rama. So that this word gives the idea of pleasure. It's like Krishna is known as Radha Raman, Gopi Raman, Rukmini Raman. These are names of Krishna who enjoys Radha or who gives pleasure. Either he's enjoying or he's being enjoyed by or he's giving pleasure. Pleasure, the idea of pleasure is So Radha, the Gopi, Rukmini. And we also have Janaki Raman. Mufa Rama, enjoyer of Janaki, Sita, Sita Raman, these are common names even today. Yeah. Such names. So this suggests this name is given Rama. There are many names of Lakshmi. Rama is a common name. So this Vrindavan became the place of pastimes of the goddess of fortune. It specifically indicates that Radha will appear. Krishna doesn't go outside of Vrindavan, that is said. It means 
we hear a Christian sometimes in Dwarka, Mathura, sometimes he goes to Hastina for India Pastor, so many places. Krishna also went to the city of Kashi, he went to Kundira, which now in Maharashtra, still that area is called Vidarbha. Rukmini is named Vidarbha Kanya, young girl of Vidarbha. So many places Krishna visited. But that was in his, not his original place, but in his Vasudeva. Vasudeva means he's known as his, known as his son of Vasudeva. But in Vrindavan, Krishna is not known as Vasudeva. He is known as Nanda Nanda, Yashoda Nanda. Outside of Vrindavan, Krishna may be known as Vasudeva Nanda, Vasudeva, or Devaki Nanda, Devaki Krishna. But in Vrindavan, they don't know who is Devaki, who is Vasudeva. They know Krishna, Govinda, Gopala. Even outside Vrindavan, Krishna is sometimes called Govinda. Gopala, Hari, Damoda, these, these names are also given, you'll find Krishna is addressed by these names even outside Vrinda, in his past and outside Vrinda. But Govinda, of course, that means to give us like not only to the cows but to the land and the senses. So that applies to his past and outside Vrinda. And also within Dwaraka, undoubtedly, so many cows must be there also. Because any city, if it, any, any official place must have cows. There's no question of building a city, at least in India, in those days. Of course, Dwarka wasn't exactly in India, just off the coast. But there yeah, must be cows. But Krishna wasn't himself personally looking out the country because he was in Kshatriya Bha, the writing of the Kshatriya. So Krishna is known as Golden Gopala. Damodha, Damodha Pasta, and that takes place specifically in Vrindavan. But even when he goes outside Vrindavan, he may be called Damodha, Girighari, remembering those Pasta. But Nanda Nanda and Krishna, he's only in Vrindavan. So if he's in Vrindavan, what's he doing in Vrindavan? Vrindavan, especially his Pasta and with the Vajvati, different quality of Pasta. So his pastimes elsewhere, especially within Vrindavan, everything is special. Sarvasam is Himat, full of special opulences which are not seen elsewhere. But over and above everything else, the speciality of Vrindavan is that Radhi Vrindavan is free, Radharani is there. According to Bhagavatam, she also goes outside. She went outside to make Krishna Kurukshetra. And also, from Gaga Sanghita, we have information that Radharani and so many gopis of Vrindavan, they sometimes used to go to meet Krishna in Dwarka. But generally, even if Krishna may appear to go outside Vrindavan, but Radharani said, she's not going outside. She's staying there. So therefore, Krishna is also staying there. Staying in Vrindavan. Which is a place of extraordinary pastor. Just yesterday I was speaking with one man from Bangalore. So he knows Narayan, but not Krishna. Now they don't know Krishna, but they are particularly attached to Narayan, Balak. And his wife is from, his wife is from a family attached with the lots of Mantralaya, Raghavendra Swami. So she's attracted to Krishna. So he got, she got one book and she saw the Atma TV program and just from that she started saying the 16 rounds and everything, offering her food, rising at 4 o'clock and all these things. But uh, he's not against but he said, oh, we know now, I But actually, Krishna is not is no different. But the, within it, there being no difference, there is also the difference that Krishna has some wonderful qualities which even Narayan doesn't have. 
that Narayan he is worshipping great awe and reverence. But Krishna, he is not worshipping awe and reverence. It may seem that he is less than Narayan. This is the mistake. That even Lord Brahma, he thought, who is this Krishna, this little boy running around in bare feet? Running around? What is it? Sometimes the cow and others, little boys, they're just village boys, they're stealing his lunch packet. Then they sit to eat. And one boy is eating something, he says, this is nice. He takes one bite and says, here, Krishna, taste this, it tastes pretty good. This is not proper culture. You can't be in the middle of eating something, you can't just take something off your plate and give it to someone else. Although, I know someone who does that regularly. But that's not proper culture. It's, uh, how can you do that? And sometimes you see, you see the gopis are calling Krishna bad names. Lumpaka. That every day you are excited with you. That Radharani is saying to Krishna, I know you are Lumpa. I know you are a devotee. It's, uh, it's not a very good word to call someone. And there are so many bad words. Is that word they say in Hindi? Dogra? Dog, dogla? In basket. You don't know that word? It's a bad word. Someone... Yeah, it's a bad word. It means a basket style. Anyway, maybe I didn't hear it properly. But anyway, there are so many bad words. You don't say that to someone respectable. In America you might just go up, go up to the president and call him all bad words. But, and now anyway they have cartoons, ridiculing people who are supposed to be respectable. But that's not Vedic culture. Vedic, Vedic culture, you, you don't make a cartoon in the newspaper. You don't make some caricature of the, of the king and make him look stupid. No, I, absolutely not done. If you do it, you'll get your head cut off anyway. There's no question to it. But that respectable person is not to be disrespected. And now who is more respectable than God? He's the most respectable. Narayana. Om Namo Narayana. In great respect, he is to be worshipped. But we see that in Vrindavan, there's not that much respect for Krishna. There's a lot of love for Krishna. Unlimited love for Krishna, but not in a very respectful way. If you even love Brahma, he says, Lakshmi Sahasra Sata, some Brahma say the Nana. The Lakshmi, they're serving with great respect. That's his vision. He sees the gopis as Lakshmi. And so he can't imagine serving with anything but respect. But the gopis, why Krishna likes them more? Because they don't serve in the respect. They're disrespectful. That of course is on the transcendental platform. There's a difference between an atheist disrespecting God and the intimate devotee. Because that disrespect, that is on the platform of the highest love. There's a lot of difference. That's why we cannot imitate. Imitation of the intimate pastime, that is a great mistake by which one falls down. If Radharani calls Krishna bad name, Krishna enjoys. If we call Krishna bad name, then it's not. If Radha and Radha's external manifestation, Durga, so we'll come under the punishment of Durga. He has ten hands with different weapons. And they're all meant for people who do things like disrespecting the personality of Godhead. So that is something very intimate. That is not to be understood by everybody. And that's also not meant for public distribution. Nowadays again, in the press, they have this whole thing of everything should be public. That's why you'll find the, even the royal families are considered most respectable. They want to, the press wants to find out any news, how they're arguing among themselves. That's supposed to be kept private. It's not really it's not proper culture that it's understood that wherever there are living beings, 
There will be some misunderstanding that is inevitable. So that's not, that private affair is private. It's not meant for broadcasting to everybody. It's only low class people who gossip. You hear that Rama, he went disguised and he heard. Which class of person was that complaining about his wife? There was some Vasana, low class person. The low class people, it means he was complaining about his wife and comparing to Rama. We are not like Rama, his wife was living away from home and, and then uh, he took him out. I'm not like that, you get out of it. So that, that is the business of low class people to make some gossip and talk about others and see their bad qualities and broadcast it everywhere. Respectable people, they keep their disagreements private. Their intimate affairs, that is private. Just like it's understood why people get married. Well, there may be different reasons, but one of the main reasons is to engage in sex life. But that's not supposed to be talked about. And nowadays they have this the different film stars will talk about and discuss their private lives. And that, that goes on. Otherwise now it's children being born. It's definitely going on. But it's not something for everyone to discuss. It's a private thing. Private thing. It's public life and private life. In the modern age they want to make there's no distinction. If everything should be public. But Krishna, you can say, this is Narayan, his private life. Is Krishna. Or actually that is his, his, his most cherished life. The Prime Minister may have so many duties and so many public affairs and he also enjoys them. But he wouldn't enjoy in the same he wouldn't enjoy in the same way if he didn't have any family, children. That's his best enjoyment. That gives him more pleasure. All day the Prime Minister, of course in the modern age nowadays, they're mostly listening to so many people with insults. I, modern politics means the opposition, they'll all insult you like anything. And your own party, especially in India, it's all sycophant. You know, sycophant means they're simply praising you, and you're so wonderful, and Jai Lalita waddles into town, and People offer her full of decencies. Some here, all the people, oh, how wonderful, how good. They weren't doing it before. When she became chairwoman of the Congress party, then all of a sudden people started to praise her. They suddenly discovered what a wonderful person she is and that there's nothing better than to praise her upside down, inside out. Although they weren't praising her before. But suddenly when she came to the Congress position, head of the party, and then the Congress people are praising her. And similarly, the opposition parties, they weren't blaming her. They didn't care. As long as she's a housewife, let her be a housewife. But all of a sudden, when she becomes a pretender to the throne, pretender to the courtesy of the prime, prime ministership of India, then all of a sudden they're blaming her like anything. But, as I'm saying, in traditional life, when there's a Raja, when there's a king, there's no such thing. There's no opposition party. If there is, they have to do it in secret because they'll get smashed. That's the, that's the position. If one Raja is in charge, his power, his control. So there's only praise. There's no such thing as allowing the opposition and democracy and everyone to have their opinion. The Raja rules the country. And if you don't like it, you go to another country. And you try to make a revolution, and if you, if you succeed, you succeed, and you become the king, otherwise you get your head cut off. That's all. That's the system. Raja, Raja, ruled by a king. So all day the king may be listening, actually from the very beginning of his The Raja, you can imagine, what for ego is in that sense. How do they begin their day? They're woken up, not like some watchman, Tuck, tuck, tuck on the door. But 
if they're woken up with music and then some poetry praising the qualities of the king, all day they have to listen. And they have a lot of work also. It's no easy job to be a king. But people are praising them, and it's all formal and official. And Maharaj, you die home, you see the Mahabharata, when there's anything, whether it's Kansa or Ugrasena, whoever happens to be on the throne, that Maharaj, you die home, Maharaj, you die home. So, very formal. So, he likes that. If he didn't like it, he wouldn't be the king. He could also go to the throne, become a yogi. So, he likes that. But he likes more when he goes home and the children play with him. So I told the story, very nice story, of Gladstone, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, when it was great, when the Prime Minister in the time of Victoria, the Prime Minister of the whole British Empire, the biggest empire the world has seen since the time of Maharaj Anamadir. So one man had an appointment to see him. He was sitting in his sitting on a chair outside his office. So he was waiting and waiting and waiting. And he was thinking, I wonder what he's doing. He's the Prime Minister of the whole British Empire. Must be very busy. Must be sad. I wonder whether he's discussing about sending a gunship here and there. That was the British policy. If anyone disagrees with him. They would send one gunship because they were, the British Empire was built on naval power because their navy was more strong than anyone else, they were way ahead of anyone else. So anyone disagreed with them, just like in China, they didn't want to cooperate, so they sent a gunship and blasted the, the Chinese used to keep this, like they tied up, blasted their sheikahs to pieces and then the Chinese had to agree. So if he discussing where, where to send a gunship, or is he discussing how to cut off the sums of the weavers in Bengal? Or probably he didn't discuss, that was just left up to the Viceroy. What's he discussing? Big, big things, important things. They look, let me have a look and see. Maybe I, maybe I won't get my appointment, but you know, I should see what Mr. Daniel Gladstone, the head of the British Empire, is doing. So he looked, there, was no, there were no guards around, so he peeked in the door, slowly opened the door and peeked in, and then he saw Prime Minister Gladstone, the head of the British Empire, on the floor on his hands and knees, with his young boy, grandson, sitting on his back, saying, Get up! Get up, horse! So the Prime Minister of the British Empire had become a horse. Why? Why should he do that? No doubt he had so many important things to do. But sometimes he likes to play with his grandson. And he, he, he becomes subordinate to the grandson in some game. What is his game? Jia, that's what he says to a horse. It means get up. Giddy up, okay. In England it's Jia. So, like that. Prabhupada gave this example. Krishna in Vrindavan, he's powerful above everyone, but he enjoys being subordinate to his devotees. So that's also not the public. Mr. Gladstone won't do that in the House of Commons. If his grandson comes, he won't get down on his hands and knees in the House of Commons. He will maintain his decorum. That's another reason why the Vajavasis, they stay in Vrindavan. Otherwise, how can he, how can he be Vasudev? How can he be, how can he go on with his pastor, his other pastor, the maintenance of the world, if he's in the Vrindavan mood? So there's a certain place for those pastors. That is Nandasya Vajra. That is the place of Nanda Maharaj, the cowherd arena. So he doesn't perform those pastimes just yet. It's like Gantan, he doesn't, he doesn't get down his hands and knees to become a horse in the house of commons. But only when he's privately alone with his own devotees. So this actually is very intimate. It's not for everyone. It's not for discussion with everyone. Daniel Gladstone won't discuss when he goes to a, a meeting of all the different prime ministers of different countries. He's not going to discuss with them. Oh, I love my grandson so much. 
he gets on my back. They also have their grandchildren, but they don't discuss like that. There's a time and place for everything, even for God. He can work, he can do whatever he likes, whenever he likes. But to preserve the sweetness of that intimacy, he performs those past times in non I didn't even come to the point of the service of some into now, how the opulence of him, but anyway, there's unlimited opulence to Krishna's past times in so many ways. So, as the power's gone off, I think I'll finish there and Hare Krishna. Any questions? Okay. Hmm. Does anyone have any questions relevant to the class, first of all? No, I'm saying, first of all, if no, but I'm saying if anyone does have a question which is relevant to the class, then we should discuss that first. Otherwise, we go off on a tangent. But it doesn't look like there is anyway, so. What is the name of the planet? A Briton at that time, at the present time, his name is Tony Blair. But at that time, it was Daniel Gladstone. Daniel Gladstone. Real. Real Victorian name. <laughs> and his, his uh, big rival was Israeli, who was a Jew. He was the Prime Minister, yeah. They were. Because he, he was more friends with Victoria because he knew how to flatter her. Because Gladstone was very, he didn't like her much. By vote, by vote. Uh, no, they, at that time there were votes, but women didn't get the vote till later. She was the queen, yeah. And then there was Florence Nightingale, who was, was unheard of. She left home and went to the Crimea. There, there was no such thing, but, but she became glorified for the thing. Um, I don't know. In, I don't think so. In Ireland, up until recently, uh, you were supposed to at least, you were supposed to get your parents' permission. You couldn't get married without your parents' permission. Until about a generation ago, there were still cases if someone got married without their parents' permission, their parents would just reject them. Disown them, yeah. Nowadays, Ireland is, is as, in Ireland, it's as fallen as anywhere else in the world. Now. When the, when the Bloom videos started coming in, and everything changed. The Bloom movie videos, yeah. In Sicily, it's, now in Sicily, it's completely fallen. Yeah, they're different culture. Different culture, yeah. They're more, they're even more Italian than the Italians. Don't say that to a Sicilian, they'll, they'll shoot you. <laughs> they're more British than the British. More loony than the British. Hmm. Opulent. Yeah, that's why I said I didn't get it. Yeah. It's an esoteric, it's an esoteric understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It means it became very opulent. And now they left the land feeling, so they're going to get it like in the West, where they have huge farms which are run, which are run by machines with a few people, just like America. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very much against the welfare of the one man's church. Another reason they're so far in the village is because of government policy. They fix the price, the government fixes the prices for the, for the uh, produce. Because they rig the whole economy. They rig fertilizer and everything. Yeah, yeah. And the whole idea of industry was just to make more and more business. And business existed for thousands of years without people. People were rich. Why, why were the British, the Danish, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the French, they were all coming around to India. They came around to Africa. Right. Missing Africa to come to India. Because India was so rich. So rich, yeah. 
So their riches was, uh, they had gold, jewels, not bank balance, paper money in the bank. Gold, jewels, silk, profuse milk products. They could throw at each other. Yes. Dhanavan, 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 that's all probably used to call that. Who's got grains and who's got cows? They are rich. It's hard to conceptualize how it used to be when you don't see it now. <laughs> you know, some people were poor, like Prince and Shudras were not supposed to have any money. Well, there were rich Shudras also. Oh. No, this time, but in the last few hundred years, there were wealthy Shudras who owned land and, yeah. They owned land and had businesses and, and all got mixed up. They would buy cash would be a Shudra, they would buy... Cash, they'd be a shudra, they'd buy, cash, they'd be a shudra, they'd buy but by good teeth, by occupation, they'd be somehow or other they came up. I guess if there's some intelligent children, they could be you know, they'd be brought up by some by their master, whoever it was, and they could flourish in that way. One thing we don't see in history is a lot of change in the past. That's what we talk about. No. Generally it's understood that the son of a brahmin would be a brahmin. But generally. Otherwise, why is that story there of uh, that story is there in the Upanishads. Who's that? Gautam and what's the, what's the point? Yeah, Gautam. Satyakam Jabala, yeah. So why is that story shows that it actually wasn't a very common thing? The fact that he accepted and it's and it mentioned in the Upanishads means that it was actually, it was showing the principle, but sadly it, it wasn't very common. What was your question? pleasure potency, but we are imbued with the pleasure potency. The absolute truth is anandamaya obhyata, joyful by nature. So because we are part and parcel of the supreme whole, we also share in that pleasure principle. Not that, we, not that because we are part and parcel of Krishna, uh, and Krishna is God, we are part and parcel, therefore we also have our own part and parcels and our own potency. No. A, there is similarity between the Jiva and Ishwara, but it's not, uh, it's, there are certain similarities, but not in every way. Although in one sense it could be, the, the Jiva in the material world, he's imitating God. So he also sometimes, sometimes in Bengal someone introduces, this is my Shakti, this is his wife. No, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not, he's trying to say that I'm Bhagavan and this is Radha, not like that, it's just language, that's all. And that, that's always also said that the, behind every great man is a woman. So a woman is, that's also accepted, a woman is the Shakti of the man. Most, Prabhupada comments on that, that most men need a woman to get them going. They need some, they need some Shakti. They need some inspiration. One who is someone who is inspired from the platform of uh, the transcendental sakti, parapraksha, and he doesn't need the inspiration from woman. But someone who is not getting so much inspiration from the antaranga sakti, then he can take some inspiration from the bahiranga sakti, who is personified by woman. So that is. That is understood. Right? Who is, why will the Kshatriya perform his duty and conquer? And, and so the woman gives inspiration to do all this. Why, 
Why do people work hard in a factory to maintain their family? The wife is there, hey, go out and get some money, bring some money. Otherwise, who's going to work? Why should you do it? So that wife is called Sadharma Charini, Sahadharma Charini. She, she performs in Vedic culture, that is Dhafsaya, so that all one's activities should be for the sake of Dharma. So the wife performs, together they perform religious activities. That means in, in Vedic culture when we say Dharma, that doesn't mean only performing fire sacrifices or something like that, but everything, your work, everything you do. You have your Swadharma, Brahma Dharma, Satya Dharma, Vaisya Dharma, Shudra Dharma. And for women there is three Dharma to serve the husband. So she serves and she inspires him also. A bad wife will inspire a man to become a rascal. And a good wife will inspire a husband to be saintly, righteous. A woman is Shakti, very powerful. So that we should understand. The point I say, yeah, the point is, is that we are only imitated. We are not Purush. And the living being in a, in a female body is not property in the way they think they are. We are all prakriti, you are meant to be enjoyed by Krishna. So, in illusion, we appear, may appear to have our potency and our expansion, like our children, our property, but actually nothing belongs to us. It's all Krishna's potency. Nothing is mine, everything is Krishna. Sri Master is also encouraged by Sri Advanced Disciples. Sri Master is encouraged by Sri Advanced Disciples, yes? Yes, okay. yeah? why not? Uh, yes, yeah? Prabhupada said so many times, I mean, I'm inspired, I'm encouraged. And, and then if, he said, if, if you don't print my books fast enough, then I become discouraged. If I'm, he, he was going ahead, translating more and more, and the disciples weren't keeping up. With the, with the printing, we're getting it because it's a big job to go from Prabhupada's dictation to come out with Srimad Bhagavatam, with Sanskrit fonts and then English, very critical marks and fully edited and printed without mistakes, big with painting, it's a big, big job. So when the disciples are falling down, I said, I, I become discouraged with any order. Seventeen books are due to be printed, fifteen volumes of Chaitanya Chaitanya two of Bhagavatam, Good in two months. Impossible. Impossible is a word of who did it. Do it. <laughs> they did it. Otherwise, one book with so many people working would normally take at least a six weeks or two months. What happened, Prabhupada, is he was translating Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam, was, he was seeing twelve commentaries in Sanskrit and one in Bengali, his own Guru Maharaj. And then he was giving the commentary. But, but whereas for Bengali, there's only, he was just saying there's such an Alpaca's commentary, which is very short, and his own, what's the sense of Alpaca's commentary. So it's much easier in that sense to do. And also, Bengali is much easier language than Sanskrit. So many Sanskrit, the Prabhupada had his assistant to help in Sanskrit. So, uh, Prabhupada is just dictating and going ahead like anything, making the book. And he, Killers of many people, Pol Pot in Antutia and in Serbia, you have some famous thing in Tokyo, so one of those people, I, I don't know his name. No, no, it's becoming so normal these days to be with genocide that you don't get famous by doing it anymore. It has to be something more sensational. So you can imagine that all of these demons are all much more nasty than Stalin and Hitler put together. They are all on the surface of the earth at the same time. Therefore, the earth, faith, 
the Lord Brahma, please help. You, you, put, you, you put this whole universe together, now you better help us out. You made the, you made the demons as well as us here the devotees, so you better help us out. There's so many demons, including my own son, I can't control him. Go after big demon. You do something about it. So the something that was done was that Krishna appeared in this world. When the Lord appears, he appears with many, many devotees, so the Yadi dynasty, in many, many numbers. And so many uh, the devotees directly from the spiritual world. And there are others also who are demigods and the heavenly father. So also devotees who appeared as members of the Yadi dynasty to join with Krishna and his pastor. Particularly three incarnations of the Lord, namely Krishna, Ramachandra, and Prithanya Mahaprabhu. When they come, they deliver many, 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 many living beings, thank you, Dr. Others, they also, they come for the pleasure of their devotees, but particularly these three forms of the Lord, they have many, many interesting pastimes, and they deliver so many people, thank you, Dr. Ram Chandra, he took all the monkeys and then so many inhabitants of the forest and all the inhabitants of our world war. He took them all back to God. And by their wonderful pastimes, which are recorded in Ramayana, in Mahabharata, Prasanna Sarasamrita, Prasanna Bhagavad, Srinam Bhagavatam, they continue to attract the minds of conditioned souls and deliver them back to God also, even after their manifest presence is over. They also deliver many demons. Even you'll find Mandodari, who was the wife of Ravana. He knew that Ram was the supreme law. And many times he used to say to Ram to Ravana, you please let this Sita go. He said, not as sick as for you to see. Even she's Maya Sita. She's not exactly the internal potency of the Lord, which Ravana cannot touch. But it's very inauspicious. Ram will come and destroy you. You give him back and then we can live. We can continue to, even we are demons, we can, we can continue to live as demons. But if you don't let him go, then you won't even be able to live as a demon. But Ravana being a demon, never cared for Ram. He said, he's just a man. I can't be killed by a man, I'm a big demon. So eventually, Eventually, of course, Ram did kill Ravana. And then Nandodari said, Thank you very much for killing She said to Ram, Thank you. She liberated him. And Ram, you killed him. Someone has to kill him. Something disturbing. I mean, you are very merciful to him. You killed him. Similarly, Narishi, when he was requested by Ravana, that you take the form of a deer and you, you entice Ram away from Sita so that I can kidnap her. And then she said, you're a rogue. What a, what a, what a nasty, I mean, I'm a demon, but I was just, Marishi was meditating in the forest, he's being afraid of Ram. And I'm a demon, but at least I know what's what. You won't get any, you won't get any auspiciousness from being kidnapping people. That will be the end of you. But he said that anyway, I know you're such a puffed up demon that you don't, you don't listen to anybody. So I'll follow your order. If I don't follow your order, you'll kill me. And if I do follow your order, Ram will kill me. I'll be killed by Ram rather than you. If I get killed by you, I'll just have to go, I'll simply uh, go to hell. But if I'm killed by Ram, I'll be liberated. So Krishna says, so many things. Krishna, Ram, all the avatars, they, they, not all, but many of them, they kill many demons. They're there. Even not all of them do. Raman days, we don't have any information of him killing any demons. But he was involved in so many crooked activities. So which later there was a big fight between the demons and the demigods, and so many demons got killed by this sweet little Brahmin boy. Big fight ensued after his after his getting involved in the affairs between the demigods and the demons. So Here's a list of big demons, not little demons, big demons, serious demons, firmly committed to the demoniac way of life, and very powerful also. They all appeared on the earth at this time, and they were all killed. 
by Krishna or by his devotees. To be killed by the devotees of Krishna is also a sickness. And that doesn't mean that he should say, I'm a devotee, let me go and kill a few people. No. In this age, you have to kill by killing the demoniac mentality. And it's a good idea to start with our own demoniac mentality. If you're going to kill by killing demons, maybe you'll be on the list too, you don't know. So all these demons, they got killed either by Krishna directly or many demons were killed by, especially by Jina and Arjuna. What is that in Gita? That's the word in a point that Dima Jena Vivakshita. The opposite army, that is protected by Dima and Arjuna. These are the two big warriors on the Pandava side. This, this, this. The Lord and the Lord, these are the only two obstacles. If these two are cleared out, Dima and Arjuna, then there's no problem. You'll be sure we can knock him over, no problem there. Sadly, not cool, they're just boys. They're, they're young, they're always just like young boys, very young. They're not so proud. They're just the sons of physicians, after all. They're, they're always, in this way, they always look down. Although, actually, in the fight, Sadly, especially, at one point, he killed so many. But especially, Dina and Arjuna, they killed so many demons in the battle of Christian. And Dina is also, he killed there are some. Krishna didn't want to kill Jara Sandhya himself, personally, because he had some family relationship with him. You see here that Jara Sandhya was the father-in-law of Kansa, Kansa's daughter, with his, with his, sorry, sorry, Kansa's wife, with his daughters of Jara Sandhya. So Krishna didn't like to kill Jara Sandhya personally, so he had been with him. Of course, Krishna killed Kansa, who was his uncle. But there was no, he had to do because no one else could do it at that time. At that time, Dima and Arjuna hadn't come on the scene and Krishna wasn't going to wait for them to kill Kansa. It was high time, his time was up, time for him to be killed. But then others, you see, the other, the brothers of Kansa, they were killed by Baladur. Because Baladur, Kansa, Krishna was related to Kansa. When you say his uncle, it's, it's always intricate. So Balade, he didn't have that close, close relationship. So Krishna let him take the, uh, the brothers of Kansa. So he, he minimized having to kill his family members. So so many demons they were killed. We were reading in the notes at the, at the end of the last chapter. One name for Krishna is Maya Manisha. So this word is understood in different ways. But not that Krishna is a product of the material energy. That Maya Manisha means Guru Kapata Maya Manisha. He appeared, he is covered over. Covered means not personally covered, but covered from the vision of materialistic people. Now, Angsakarsha Sarva say Yoga Maya Salavita, Nuro Yang Lavita, and Asi Loka Lavita, and Asi Materialistic people can't see Krishna, he's covered by the curtain of Maya, they think of an ordinary person. So, uh, Krishna and Balaram, they appeared. In this world, what does that mean? Rati Matyani Bhagavad, Saharami Nati Sava. How does that mean? Rati Matyani No, 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 it's not a verse from Bhagavad. I just can't remember the first line. Saharami Nati Sava. Rati Matyani Bhagavad, Guha Kapatamani Sava. He says that Krishna and Balaram appeared. Although they, they perform many superhuman activities, but they appear to the materialistic people to be ordinary people, and this way they treat them by thinking. Uh, because the ordinary people, they thought Krishna and Balaram, they're just ordinary like that, like superhuman. Super, super. Somehow or other, he, he managed to kill so many demons. He was just by luck, by chance. But the demons, even though they saw Krishna's greatness, we couldn't appreciate it. So another meaning of Maya Manusha and another meaning of the word Maya is mercy. So Krishna comes to give mercy to even big, big demons. Who would be merciful to demons? You simply want them punished. They are so bad. Ethan was so nasty. He used to kill babies. Now you may ask that why is it then 
But you start, you see, Krishna, he's playing with all these cowhead boys. And how is it they're all still living? He's keeping on his killing all the babies. He didn't get them. By the power of Yoga Maya, he didn't get them. So, Kanko sent Krishna out, kill all the young boys, children. But what happened is, she didn't, by the power of Yoga Maya, she didn't find her way to the houses of the, even though he told her that you, you specifically used to go to go cool, but she didn't make it there until she came to kill Krishna. And she, she didn't kill Krishna, she got killed by Krishna. So what happened, she killed, she found out all the young babies in the, in the demonial people's houses. So it was his sending out Krishna to kill all the babies, tax fire on Kansa, because so many children of the demons were killed. So she was so nasty, but Krishna was so kind, that he was so merciful to her, that he gave her liberation in the position of his mother. This is Krishna's kindness. Uh, that don't you know Thakka, he said. Asura Sakal Thaila Sada, he said. He says that even so many great demons, they are trained to a lotus feet. He says actually even these demons, they're not really demons. No one's really a demon in one sense. Certainly, some people are demons. Otherwise, Krishna wouldn't... One whole chapter of Bhagavad Gita is dedicated to pointing out what are these defects or the bad qualities of the demon. But inherently, no one is a demon because everyone is serving the Krishna. So Krishna, when he kills these demons, he kills their bodies, he takes away their demoniac mentality also, and delivers them back to God, if they want to go. He reawakens their their feelings for him, because Krishna is so attractive, even more attractive than other forms of God. That question came up, that, where we find that Kamsa was in a previous life, Kala he was also killed by Vishnu. So how come he had to take birth again? That is because Vishnu, that's one of his qualities that he has, one of the qualities of Vishnu is that he rewards liberation to those. He rewards liberation to those who kill. But at the same time, the living being is independent. So if he really doesn't want to go back to Godhead, that okay, this thing is me, but I, I still hate you and I don't want to go back to Godhead. I'll come back again and fight you again and torment you again. Let me back out the birth to your enemy, which is his desire. But our eternal enemy, the demon death. So, all right, if you insist, but when Krishna comes, Krishna is so overwhelmingly attractive that even the demons in their hatred of him they find their some attraction there, and Krishna accepts that, delivers them back to God. And Krishna's overwhelming mercy. Now we see the list of demons, and there are, we also list of so many great devotees. So many demons appeared in this world, and so many devotees they appeared in the Yadu dynasty and the other, the Yadu, Boja, and the Sa dynasty, different dynasties. So many great devotees appeared, and even not in great dynasties, not all of the great devotees of Krishna appeared in very, who joined with Krishna's Lula, they didn't all appear in great dynasties. You find even the Aboriginal women who used to come, they were living in the jungle, what we call nowadays Adivasi. So they, they were living in the forest, and they would come out of the forest to bring some food, and just like nowadays you find people go in the forest, they bring honey, like that, out of the forest. So they would come into the village of Gokul, and they would see Krishna, they would be attracted to him, and the young girls, they would also be attracted to him, and they would pick up some kumkum from the, 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 the Adivasi girls, they wouldn't be using, but where the Krishna and Vaisa and some kumkum kum from their breasts had fallen down, they would, they would take that, or they would take the dust from where Krishna had been walking, and put that dust and smear it on their breasts, and in this way, they would pacify the nasty feelings for Krishna. So they were from what you would call the lowest, Class. Here also you see the florist Sudama in uh, Mathura. When, he went, when Krishna went to Mathura, there, there were some devotees there, just like you see here, some members of the Yadu dynasty, you know, they continued to live with Akura as his nominal friend. They pretended to be friends. Like Akura, he was supposed to be the friend of Kansa. Kansa thought, you're my good friend. But actually Akura, he didn't like Kansa at all. But he was living in uh, Mathura, just he thought, I'll be close to Krishna, maybe I'll get a chance to see Krishna. He didn't want to run away. He thought, at least I'll be close to Krishna, and, and maybe uh, shortly after some time Krishna will come and get rid of his tyrant, his death spot. 
They thought, I'll see these pastors. So some of the members in the Yadi dynasty, they were living in Mathura. And in the big city, of course, there's not only kings, so for every one king there will be so many helpers and so many, the whole, there's so many different castes are there. So Sudama, the florist, he was there, he was a devotee. So as you know at least, two Sudama in Kristalina, and Sudama the forest in Mathura, Sudama the cowherd boy, and Sudama Vitra in Dwarka, or otherwise Kobanda, he goes to poor. The poor Brahmin who becomes rich. So there were devotees there in, in the lower class. Flourish is not uh, considered high class, but considered Shudra class. But he is also a great devotee of Krishna. In the Shudra class, he had to have the Vasana. It's considered very low class. But because he thought Anasar had come to, he was very puffed up. So he insulted Krishna. He was a demon. He got his head cut off by Krishna. So in all different castes, we find the, the Naga Padmi, the wives of the Kaliya state, they were also devotees of Krishna. They were not born in a very high lineage. Of course, among the snakes, they also have their, their, there's the Naga Loka, which is below this earth planet, so the, the snakes, the certain demoniac species, they're snakes, so they have intelligence and they have they have their kings and their different castes and everything. And they can take human forms. Even Arjuna married Uliti, I think her name was. Uliti. Hmm? No, Uliti, the snake wife. Uliti, the snake wife of Arjuna. So there are so many different uh, devotees in different backgrounds. They came and appeared in his past, and so many demons also. Now we hear that there are many eternal devotees of Krishna who appear with Krishna in his past. It's like the Pandavas. They're considered to be eternal devotees of Krishna who specifically appear to assist his past in this material world. And there are many other devotees who they come from Golok Vrindavan. Yashoda comes from Golok Vrindavan. Even Devaki and Vasudev. The eternal associates of Lord in the spiritual world. And sometimes it's asked, sometimes it's asked that, uh, that previously it's described that Devaki and Devaki and Rasudev, Yashoda and Nanda in previous verse, they performed austerities by which they could take the position of Krishna's mother and father. Then how is it that they are eternal devotees of the Lord if they, if they were performing austerities to take this position? It appears that they were devotees and in this material world and they had some desire to have the Lord as their son and they performed their service and they got him as their son. But our Acharya, especially Jiva Goswami, has explained with reference to the scriptures that actually they are directly from the spiritual world but they took these forms previously in the material world uh, and then later took the forms of Nanda Yashoda, Vasudev and Devaki. Now another question may come that if these are eternal associates of the Lord these are some associates of the Lord who perform past times of the Lord. So Krishna is always the Bhattati. It's not that he's not ever the Bhattati. He's always the Bhattati. Every time he appears, he's a Bhattati. Every time he appears, he performs last leader with the Gopi. And there are many demons also who he serves. Here are the list. There's the list of some of the main ones. Palamba, Vaka, Chanara. So Krishna, when he comes, he kills many demons. So is it that these demons come again and again? No. It's not that the, if that was the case, then it would mean that these demons, they were diverse to Krishna and Mr. Satri. They would be the eternal enemy of Krishna. But that's not the fact, because the eternal position of the living being is to be the servant of Krishna. We see that these demons were liberated and went back to Godhead. So how is it that every time Krishna comes, that there is demons, similar demons? So it can be understood that different living beings, by their mixture of extreme impiety, mixed with some good fortune, they get the chance to, they, they, they have a demoniac mentality, 
and they get the chance to take birth as demons to come in contact with Krishna. Anyone who comes in contact with Krishna is fortunate. Even the demons, they say, even by the enmity towards Krishna, they are benefited. Of course, if someone is, it's not that everyone who is inimical towards Krishna, they get, they get the chance to take birth as a Salamda or a Dhaka or a Dana. So we don't recommend to become inimical towards Krishna. That is very inauspicious to the living being to be inimical towards Krishna. But even if he is inimical towards Krishna, the fact that he is somehow rather thinking of Krishna will ultimately benefit him. He will have to suffer the effects of his offenses, but that, that somehow rather by coming in contact with Krishna, he will be purified. Even if the effects of those offenses, that will, for many, many lifetimes, he will have to suffer. But it's definitely better not to be, we're not recommending be a demon. We're recommending be a, don't be a demon, be a devotee. But even a demon, if he directly is envious of Krishna, he may get, he gets the opportunity to be purified. Just the, the biggest demons are the Mayavadis. They don't even, they don't even like to think of Krishna at all. They totally block him out. They don't, they don't want to think of him at all. Even the demons like Sisyphal, they're more fortunate because they're always thinking of Krishna. Even in enmity, they're thinking of Krishna. So ultimately they get the chance to be killed by Krishna. So there are different uh, living beings, they take the forms of different demons in different births. And the past times may be a little different every time. It's not absolutely stereotype that Krishna has to perform his past times in exactly the same way every time. Just like for instance, I believe Vishnu Chakravati. Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, he describes, although, Prabhu, we're going to have a long discussion, maybe it could be at some other time, or some other place. So Vishwara Sarvadri Thakur describes that sometimes Krishna and Dalaran, they ride to Mathura on the, using Kalaya as a horse. So that's a different question. And, and here, in, in this day of Brahma, as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam here, Kalaya is given away from Mathura, Manda, from Raja Bhumi. Go out, go to Fiji. And apparently he's in Fiji. So, that's also auspicious because it's also auspicious for the people of Fiji because he has the footprint of Lord Krishna all over him. Krishna enjoyed a nice, a nice pastime. Kaliya was being envious towards Krishna, but Krishna enjoyed the nice pastime of dancing on all his hoods. And all his hoods became marked with the footprints of Krishna. And with the wives of the Naga, the, the Naga Patnis or the wives of Kaliya said, they're very surprised. But how is it? You see, so many devotees, they're simply longing that we could get the dust of Krishna's feet on our head, but we, we, they're not, this Kaliya has a thousand heads, and every one of them is not, not with the dust, but directly with the footprints of Krishna. So what, that is called causeless mercy. So many devotees, they want it, they're aspiring for it, they're performing meditation for millions of lifetimes, they don't get such an opportunity. But Kaliya, who is Envious to, to, to all living beings by his poison, he kills so many living beings. Just by, you see, a snake is poison. So that, the poison is stored in his body. That, that is a physical representation of his extreme envy. And Kaliya yeah. was so poisonous that his breath was so, his breath was poisonous. And even he was living in the water, but it was, the, his breath would bubble up and then spread around. And, even any bird coming in that area would, would be flying and drop down because it's a poisonous gas. Like just like here in Baroda, we get poisonous gas. They are not about also now. They want to emulate Baroda, so they also have poisonous gas. And you see, the money of people, they make poisonous gas that poisons everybody. But Kaliya, he was emanating from his very body poisonous gas by which so many living beings are killed. But Krishna is very merciful to him. And later on, Kaliya, by, because he became, he became humble by thinking, he, he, first of all, he was trying to catch Krishna, and he caught him and pulled him under the water, and then Krishna escaped, and because he, he thought that if I don't, he was enjoying his pastime. 
But in the meantime, he thought that all the inhabitants have been dead, and if I stay underwater even a second longer, they'll all die. Because they're thinking I'm dead, and if they think I'm dead, then they're all dead. They're all unconscious on the ground, thinking that Krishna had died. So Krishna escapes and Kali was embraced. Kali was embraced, not in, not, not the same as the embrace of the gopis, but still, he was fortunate enough to embrace the Supreme Lord, and Krishna came up and Krishna was dancing on his head, and Kali was, with so many, so many tentacles, and he was thinking, ah, Krishna was dancing on this one with, with a few heads to try and catch him. In the meantime, Krishna would jump up on that one, and this way Kaliya became bewildered. And eventually he realized, wait a minute, I can't win, I'm losing. Then he surrendered to Krishna, became a great devotee. And all the unseen to the other inhabitants of Vrindavan, all the gopis, they also came up and said, hey, you were dancing like that, but we didn't enjoy it. We also want to enjoy it. When you're dancing, you should dance with us. So they all had a nice rock lila dance on Kaliya's foot while he was moving up and down. So these are some of the past times Krishna was enjoying. So Kaliya became devoted. His wives, they're already devoted. Sometimes you see the wives become devotees and, and afterwards the husband becomes devoted. Sometimes he's on the other way. In this case, the Naga Patni, they were great devotees and by, because of their devotion and their good wishes for him, their husband, who was after all a great demon, he also, by the combined mercy of Guru, in this case his gurus were his wife, and Krishna, he also became a devotee of Krishna. So we will see so many personalities are being mentioned here in these pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan and outside Vrindavan. So many different devotees with so many different relationships. The, the Naga Patni, they were great devotees. They were still thinking of their husband now. They prayed to Krishna that please deliver him. After all, he's a saint. What do you expect from a saint? He's envious by his nature. But now he promised he won't do any more trouble. We'll keep him in control and please let him go. So that, whereas we find the, another set of wives, the Dvija Patni, they totally, the, the wives of the Brahmins were performing sacrificial ceremonies. They were, they completely, they, they didn't care for their husbands at all. If they are the husbands, they're not devotees, to hell with them. Let, let's go and see Krishna. And even the, the Brahmins themselves, themselves said, to hell with us. After they realized that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of God and they neglected him, they said, they themselves condemned them. First of all, their wives, practically condemned them by leaving them. And then later on, they themselves would condemn them. Why? What is the use of all our sacrificial ceremonies and our birth as high class Brahmins? And Krishna came to us and we couldn't even recognize him. Still, they didn't recognize him because they thought, Kansa, he's just a short distance away. We have to be careful. We have to be practical to do it. Krishna, Krishna's here, but Kansa's there. So, you know, we're, we're, at the border, they were just living on the edge of Vrindavan, on the side close to Mathura. So they thought, Chris, we're in between Krishna and Kansa. So, it's all right being a devotee of Krishna, but what if Kansa finds out when he gets to us before Krishna comes? So they recognized Krishna as the Supreme Lord, but they didn't really have faith in him. Like his wife, his wife had faith that even if we abandon our husband, Krishna will protect us. We're more interested in Krishna. So there are so many varieties of devotees that we just that will be described here. And this has been the subject matter, and still is the subject matter of great devotees who analyze these pastimes and see what, how is Krishna relating with the different devotees, who are these devotees, what are their different relationships, what are the relationships of devotees in Vrindavan, what are the relationships of devotees in Mathura and Dwaraka, what are the relationships in Vaikuntha. Therefore, we have Bhagavatam and Sanatan Goswami, that is considered the exposition of Srimad Bhagavatam because it describes the different relationships of the devotees going up to the highest devotee in Vrindavan, highest of all as Srimati Radharani. So, this book is an exposition of Srimad Bhagavatam, which ultimately Srimad Bhagavatam is a book of Dasa. Nidamakalpatulal Dalitam Kalam Shukamakadamrita Jagatam Nitam 
ਕੁਦਰਤ ਭਾਗਵਤ ਵਾਕ ਨਾਲ ਅੰਗ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਰਤੀ ਦਾ ਦੂਤ ਦਾ ਰਤ ਭਗਵਤ ਅਨੁਸੰਗ ਭਗਵਤ ਸਤ ਵਿਗਿਆਨ ਦੇ ਖਲਾਸ ਦੇ ਅਧਿਆਪਕ ਜੋ ਜਾਤ ਓਵਰ ਐਂਡ ਓਵਰ ਐਂਡ ਬਾਦ ਐਂਡ ਬਿਯੰਡ ਦਾ ਦੀ ਆਲਟਰਨੇਟ ਲਿਮਿਟ ਆਫ ਜਾਤ ਦੀ ਆਲਟਰਨੇਟ ਲਿਮਿਟ ਆਫ ਖਲਾਸ ਦੇ ਜੰਗ ਟੂ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਦੀ ਜਾਤ the past and the christian even to understand the last that there is also philosophy to understand that last is also be also to be understood analytically and philosophically it's to be experienced but it's to be understood analytically and philosophically that's how we find the in bhakti vasama to sindhu the ocean of the nectar of rasa bhakti rasa the yoga goswami he analyzes what are the different rasas and what is rasa bhav what are contradictory rasas which no one should it should not be assembled as contradictory they don't bring pleasure to krishna so shri bhagavata understands what is the correct philosophy and what is rasa it needs to be properly understood bhakti siddhanta vidhita arasa bhav shri sai sabha sita na ho ye la and sita ni sai sabha sita sai 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 bhakti siddhanta vidhita arasa bhav any statement that is against the proper philosophical understanding of the bhakti science or mix mellow in such a mellow just like mixing the enlightenment the uh, ghastly rasa and neutral rasa with, with uh, conjugal rasa that's called rasa bhav just like for instance if someone says that uh, so many days I've been very I've been trying to be I mean attracted to the form of the of the opposite sex which is simply made of blood, pus, stool and urine but, but now I'm going to give that up because I am now attracted to the intimate conjugal pastimes of Krishna so uh, within the format of Vindava and Lina that is Rasa Bhat because you can't have conjugal Ras mixed up with this ghastly ghastly and neutral it's true there's not in this of the neutral rock and, and of the fiber that has been come mixed with the conjugal so they, they don't mix neutrality and conjugal rock and gaseous and conjugal rock they don't mix so all these things have to be understood from Srimad Bhagavatam and from books like Bhakti Samhita Sindhu which are the analysis of Srimad Bhagavatam have to understand but ultimately that is to be experienced ultimately Srimad Bhagavatam is presenting these pastimes of Krishna that we may enter into those pastimes and experience them it's not simply a, a matter of discussion of course discussing Srimad Bhagavatam that Srimad Bhagavatam is not different from Krishna so if you are devotee you can experience Krishna in every page of Bhagavatam you can experience Krishna's pastimes but it's not simply a matter of academic analysis one has to actually enter into the mood of the devotee by taking up the service mode then you can understand Krishna and experience his pastor so that cannot be attempted prematurely that is a gift from Krishna a pastor Krishna nama dina bhavadya hindriya even nukha hindi bhava swayana vakti yati yati one cannot artificially do a whole vault into Krishna's lila but he has to become qualified by serving Krishna, then Krishna will bestow upon him the understanding and the experience of Bhakti Ram. So now we're beginning the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, having read through all the previous cantos in the classes here, in this canto. So, 10th canto especially, that is a matter of relic. All the Bhagavatam is meant for study, understanding, and relative. Especially the French sense or the past sense of Krishna are most relative. Because Krishna is the most attractive, his name is Krishna. He is the most attractive form of the attractive forms of the personality of God. So these French sense or past sense, they are the subject matter of relative. Uh, particularly by the Yasuka of Bhakti, so those who are experiencing those Yasuka. But all classes of people, can enjoy hearing about Krishna, with the exception of two, two classes of people, they, they will not relish the past times of Krishna. That is described at the beginning of the previous chapter. They are Pasigna, the animal killer, or the killer of the soul, namely the Mayavadi. 
they will not relish the past times of Krishna. But everybody else, they can relish these past, they can take pleasure in hearing the past times of Krishna. Therefore, Prabhupada presented Krishna books, the, the past times of Krishna in the 10th canto, with philosophical explanations, so people might not misunderstood, and have them widely distributed, so that people can have some attraction for Krishna. Because by hearing about Krishna, the result is that you go to Krishna, Shinanti, Garanti, Dhananti, Adhishtaka, Smaranti, Nandanti, Kadeji, Sanjanaha. Kaeva Prasanta, Sirena, Chava, Kam, Bhava, Prava, Ho, Paramang, Padam, Bhujam, Kinti Devi presents very nice <coughs> analysis that she says, My dear Krishna, those who hear about your past things or glorify your past things or remember your past things or take pleasure in others doing so, certainly see your lotus feet. And therefore, they will never again have to see repeated birth and death. So this is the benefit of Christian pastor. That's what we hear. We're supposed to discuss Christian pastor. There's so much philosophy to be discussed. But our goal or our, our desire, our aim is to discuss Hari Kata, which is the philosophy, the description of the form of Krishna, and specifically the discussion of the past kinds of Krishna. They're very pleasing. Mano Dirana, they're very pleasing to be, to hear. Therefore, now we're entering into the 10th century of Bhagavatam, there'll be discussion of Krishna's past kinds, so I won't be here, but those of you who are, you can relish hearing these pastimes of Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the perfection of life, to relish these pastimes, to engage in the service of Krishna, to chant the names of Krishna, to hear the pastimes of Krishna. These, all these activities are on the platform, they're on the perfectional platform. So we may not have reached the perfectional platform of appreciation of what it means to serve Krishna, what it means to chant his name, what it means to hear his pastimes. But these activities, there are activities on the professional platform. The perfected souls, they like to hear about Krishna. And even though they are not perfected, but are trying to be perfected, they also like to hear about Krishna. And as they cultivate that relish for hearing about Krishna, they become perfect. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Comments? Hmm. Not to speak loudly, you can start a long way back there. After liberation, I heard that both the devotees and the, and the non-devotees were by the mercy of the Lord, they just about the Godhead, and then. What is completely different? The activity. Your attitude towards Krishna is different, yes? Well, that is the mercy of Krishna. Many times the demons, they don't, they're liberated, but they don't go back to Godhead, especially those who are killed by the Lord in other forms than, than, than Vishnu, in other forms than Krishna. They get in personal liberation. But, and, but mostly those who are killed by Krishna directly, they get liberated by the Godhead. You can only say that Krishna's special mercy, causeless mercy. Causeless mercy means, if you say, what is the reason, then the word causeless means a high city. It means without any hatred, without any particular cause, other than Krishna's mercy. That is his mercy. Causeless mercy. They may not get a position as exalted as the devotee. They get some devotional position. But who can I take the position of mother, not the position of mother or children? But she got the position of mother. Therefore, that famous verse is there. Who spoke that? Who said that? He said, who should I take shelter of? Said, who can be more merciful than Krishna? Just see how merciful Krishna is. So the understanding is that how merciful he is because he gave Krishna the position of his mother. Now the understanding is that all these demons, they also had some attraction to Krishna. And Krishna, after 
killing them, he took away all their offenses and all their sinful activities. And what was left, a little bit of attraction to Krishna, Krishna magnified that and gave, gave them the position as his devotees. Now, in the case of Krishna, she described, in her previous life, she was his sister of Bali Mahala, meaning Ratna Mahala. So when Bhavande first came, he saw, oh, what a nice little boy. So sweet and cute and beautiful. She thought, who is that lucky woman who has suckled him at her breast? I wish I could also have the opportunity. She had a motherly feeling towards him. But then later when Bhavan gave, cheated Bali Maharaj and took everything away from him, superficially cheated him. She, along with all the other demons, apart from Bali Maharaj and Pallad Maharaj, became very angry, because that is the nature of the demons, they are against Vishnu. So she became very angry and her demoniac mentality came out and she thought, I'd like to kill this master. He came as a nice little boy, but he is going to cheat her. So in the next life she got the opportunity of putting her to attempt what is not possible anyway, to kill him. So after her, she was killed by Krishna, Krishna remembered that after all, he did at one point have some loving feelings towards me. So Krishna remembered, she wanted to be my mother. All right, let her be my mother. He wanted the mercy of Krishna. He takes the good side, not the bad side. He thought that she had some motherly feeling, let me accept her. And that the, the bad thing, all right, cut that out. But what is the good thing? Accept her. And that is, uh, devotees, especially devotees in the future of Krishna consciousness. That is their expertise also, because we can't, uh, we can't think that a new one we need will be a devotee. We have to meet so many demoniac people in our preaching. So if, if the devotee, if the very expert devotee can find some, some information to serve Krishna, and if he can bring that out, he can make the de- demons into devotees. That is the gift from Krishna, if he can do that. Why this contradiction? The devotees are all the time serving Krishna, but if you do some offense, you're not going to get Krishna consciousness. Well, no, if you make some offense, it's not necessary that you're not going to get Krishna consciousness. But it will, an offense will, um, that will slow down your progress. The offense doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get Krishna consciousness. The, the process of sadhana is to come to the perfect stage by which we become free from all offenses. Even then you may do due to 